love. And those of you who are live screaming, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise, for he is worthy. Hallelujah. We're going to give him thanks, for he's worthy of praise. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. Hallelujah. We want to give him what's due him this morning and nothing less. Amen. 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 God bless you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to come and give you praise. Thank you for being our rock. Thank you for being our everything this morning. We give you praise. We give you glory. There's no God like you. No God that can do what you do. We lift your name. We honor you. We make you bigger than any situation that we may have. God, we thank you. We praise you. And as we assemble here today, we ask, O oh Lord, that you would prepare our hearts to give you praise. That you would open our eyes to see what you're doing in the Spirit. You would open our ears so that we can hear what you're saying to your church today. Lord, have your way. Forgive us for our sins. Lord, knowing and unknowingly, Lord God, we ask this day. And Father, we come against any spirit that would exalt itself against the knowledge of you. God, we don't want to be hindered by anything. And we ask you, Father, that you would have your way. Have your way in this place. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. You are welcome in this place. You are welcome in our hearts. You are welcome. We put you on the throne. We take ourselves off the throne. Do what you want to do in this house today. Have your way. Prepare our hearts to receive the word. Father, we decree it and we declare that it will not fall on deaf ears today. Hallelujah. And not only will we be hearers of your word, but I thank you, Lord, that we're going to be doers of your word. God, we thank you. God, we give you the glory. We give you the praise and we give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, we lift up our pastor today. Have your way in his life. Have your way. God, we thank you. We praise you. We're excited about what you're going to do. We come with expectancy. Thank you for salvation that's going to come forth today. Deliverance in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal it in the mighty name of Jesus. Eyes open. Ears open. We want all that you have for us, oh God. We're not going to be spectators today, but we're going to participate, God, in what you're doing in this place. Whatever you're doing today, God, we want to... God, don't do it without us. Don't do it without us, oh God. Don't let us be caught up in something that we miss you today. God, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. And let the body of Christ in live screen and here say amen. It is done. Hallelujah. Are there any grateful people in the house this morning? 
Anybody come to give God glory? Did anybody come with a thank you on their lips? Hallelujah. Anybody come to give God glory? To give God thanks for being your way maker? For being God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah for being your peace. Hallelujah. Are there any grateful people? Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But came for no other reason Hallelujah. but to give him thanks for being good, for being merciful, for being faithful, for just being who he is. Hallelujah. This song just says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we put that in this atmosphere on this morning? Yes. Because our God is worthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together with us and let's just give God thanks for being good because he is worthy of all of the glory, of all of the honor because he is good. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for he is good. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good, for he is good. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give Oh, 
something good for you uh-huh uh-huh now how many of you in here God has done something good for you okay okay I, I, I need I need to check this out how many of y'all God has done something good for you in the back how many of you God has done something good for you over on this wall how many of you God has done if God has done something good for you stand on your feet and
neighbor, I'm sorry, but I got to holler right about here. Because every time I think of Jesus, oh, and all that he's done for me, my soul rejoices. Glory be to God. Somebody holler in here. If you can holler when you're hurt, you ought to be able to holler when you're helped. I wish I had somebody in here. Somebody scream in this house. Glory be to God. Listen, I listen. Glory be to God. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want you to know you're in the right place this morning. Those of you who are streaming online today, I want you to know you are in the right place. Glory be to God. I came up at a time where we had this saying called the place to be. Anybody know what I'm talking You got to be in the place to be. Because why? Because the place to be is where God was. Mm. The place to be is where it was happening. The place to be is where things were going forth. And how many of you know God's going to do some great things in this service today? Oh, I wish I had some people that expect in God. Hallelujah. Listen, I want you to know that you're in the right place this morning. Amen. And we are so very happy to have you worship with us today. Those of you who are streaming, we give God great praise for you. If this is your first time streaming, we salute you and we say Welcome, amen. Welcome to the Abundant Love Fellowship Church. If you are in person with us this morning and this is your first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth time, uh, amen. We don't care how long it's been, but if you are visiting with us this morning, stand on your feet in the sanctuary. If you're visiting this morning, if you are a visitor, let me say all the syllables, a visitor. All right, all right, all right. But listen, how many of y'all can give God praise for family being here? Oh, I wish I had some somebody that's glad that they belong to a family with a good father. Glory be to God. With some great brothers and sisters. I, oh, come on. I wish I had somebody in here. Hallelujah. Listen, we thank God for your presence and you enhance our worship experience. Glory be. How many of you ever had to worship by yourself? Anybody? Maybe I'm maybe I'm on the wrong. Anybody ever have to worship by yourself? I feel you, sis. I, me too. Me too. I've had to worship, but it's so much better when you can do like David said. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Listen, for those of you who, 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 you know, the devil got you all messed up and you can't give God praise. Can you give God praise? Reverend Nichols is here this morning. Come on. Can you give God praise in this house? Glory be to God. Oh, I thought you'd do a whole lot better than that. Can you give God praise? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God is an awesome God. God is an awesome God, and he is certainly worthy to be praised. I want to say this to you. I want to say this to you. Never go by your circumstance or your situation to think whether God is on your side or not. Adrian, can I talk to you? I've been through hell in my life. But the only way I got out is because he was with me. I wish I had somebody. I, I've been down, but I got up because he was with me. Now, wait a minute. The situation didn't determine his location. I wish I had somebody because God is never intimidated about where I am. Matter of fact, he'll go into the devil's backyard and rescue he is good. Glory be to God. Listen, never go by your situation. See, sometimes some of us can only give God praise when things are going good. 
Now, if I was the devil, I'd just make sure stuff didn't go good for you. Mm -hmm. But if I was the devil, I'd be confused when I tried to get in your situation, but you were still giving God praise. You were still giving God glory. You were still worshiping God. Some of y'all ain't got it yet. Some of y'all ain't got it yet. Keep on saying he's good. Keep on saying he's good. How do I know he's good, Pastor? Because I've been through the fire and he was good. I've been through the flood and he was good. I've been down, but he was still good. Didn't have two nickels to rub together, but he was still good. He is good. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Listen. Listen, I know what you want to do. I, I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. I know what you want to do. I know what you want to do. I know what you You're just like, Pastor, I'm ready to sow in this atmosphere. I know. I, listen, listen, listen. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. You are ready to sow in this atmosphere. So I'm asking all of the tithers, amen, all of you who will be giving an offering, amen, I'm going to ask you to get your offering ready. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. envelope please raise your hand our ushers will make sure you get one I know everybody wants to sew I know everybody wants to sew now please raise your seed up glory be to God raise your seed up father we thank you for the seeds that are being sown in this place, Father, in your kingdom, God. And according to your word, Father, you said you would bless the sower. Matter of fact, you said you would bless the seed sown, that the seed sown may be able to bless the sower. So, Father, we thank you in advance for this seed that we are sowing in the good ground of the kingdom of God will bring forth a harvest that will be a blessing to us, Father. I thank you in advance for every giver for the harvest. I thank you, Father God, for everyone that's giving tithe, giving offering, Father, and we lift and magnify your name with our seed sown. And Father, we give you the glory, the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. He is good. Yes, he is good. Yes, he's good. He is good. Breathe. 
praise be unto God. Listen, we're going to ask you to turn your attention, amen, to our monitors for our announcement. But before, but before we go into our announcements, can you join me in welcoming Mr. and Mrs. Adrian Barker to the sanctuary today? They are back from their honeymoon, amen. Glory be to God. We are so glad to have them, amen, worship with us today. Please, your attention to our monitors. Good, Good morning. morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Church. Today is Sunday, November the 20th, and these are your weekly announcements. Baptisms will take place today immediately following service. New members orientation is held every second Sunday of each month. Please see Minister Adrian Halliburton or Sister Elena Mason with any questions. Discipleship classes are held every Wednesday evening at 6 p.m. in person and via Zoom link. Please contact Minister Paula Smith for details. Join us each Wednesday night for prayer at 6.30 p.m. in classroom number one. A Zoom link is available. For additional information, please contact Reverend Mary Lynn Hamilton. Wednesday night live sessions are held in person and via Facebook Live, so join us each Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Youth Bible study is available to all youth ages 3 through 17 every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please see Minister Candace Barker with any questions. Our Sunday service is held in person and via Facebook Live. We welcome you to join us each Sunday morning at 10.30 a.m. for a powerful word from God. Stay informed by following Abundant Love Fellowship Church on all of our social media platforms to receive up-to-date information. You can sell your tithes and offering via PayPal by going to www.alfwaco.com and selecting the Donate button, or you can mail checks or money orders to P.O. Box 1547, Hewitt, Texas 76643, or via our Cash App to ALF Offering. And these have been your weekly announcements. Have a blessed week, Abundant Love. Good morning, Abundant Love Fellowship Listen, Church. I want to hear the best choir this side of heaven. Amen. A couple of things I want to add. This week, this week, as we go into our Thanksgiving uh, celebration time on Thursday, there will not be any services Wednesday night. Amen. 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 We, some of you are traveling. Some of you got people coming in. Amen. And we want you to spend that time with your family. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Um, um, what else would I need to say? I think that was it. I think that was it. Amen. Praise be unto God. Uh, uh, one more time, and I know y'all not tired of standing, but stand on your feet. Give God great praise for the best choir this side of heaven. The Abundant Love Fellowship Choir.
Somebody give him glory for his goodness and his mercy. Uh, I wish I had somebody in here that even after the music stops, your heart keeps going and you give God praise for his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. 
Yes, God. Have mercy. And have mercy. Toward us. Toward us. Yes, God. For your Because, God, we know we didn't deserve it. But you did it anyway, God. Father God, we thank you for your mercy that morning by morning, Father God, you just keep on blessing us and keeping us and providing for us, God. You take care of us better than we take care of ourselves. And, Father God, we take hallelujah. We say thank you, Jesus. Father God, we now come before your presence to hear your word. And Father God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would open our minds and open our hearts. And Father God, open our ears, our spiritual ears to receive, Father, what the Spirit of the Lord would say to us on today. Father God, because your credit is good with us, we thank you in advance. Because we know, Father God, you're going to give us exactly what we need. And we give you all of the praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. If you will stand with us turn your Bibles to the book of Exodus. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 1. Exodus chapter 1. Glory be to God. And while you're finding that, I want to I want to put this announcement um, next Sunday immediately following services we will have our church meeting so please 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 if you will please get back in town to be here next Sunday immediately after services we will have our church meeting glory be to God amen amen Exodus chapter 1 starting with verse 11 uh, let's start with verse 10 Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there uh, falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us. And so get them up out of the land. Therefore, they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, uh, uh, uh. the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied oh God that'll preach right that the more they afflicted them the more they multiplied and grew and they they were greed because of the children of Israel I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, 
in this season, we need promise over pressure. Mm, I need you to look at your other neighbor and say, neighbor, we need promise over pressure. Ah, you may be seated in the presence of our God. I would preface this message this morning with this thought. Nobody likes pressure. We don't like to be pressured into decisions. We don't like to be pressured into certain activities. We don't like to be pressured into certain relationships. And one of the reasons we don't like to be pressured is because of what we have experienced when we was pressured. Many times when we were pressured, we made some bad decisions. When we were pressured, we did things that were not good for us or anybody else. When we were pressured, we operated out of the weight placed on us and not from the power working in us. Have you ever went to buy something? And you wanted to look around first to decide what you wanted to purchase, but while you were looking, a salesman come to you and starts pressuring you to buy some stuff. And I don't know about you, but that experience is annoying to me. It's frustrating to me. And when, and when you get annoyed or frustrated, you can't think straight. Because your mind is distracted from the purchase to the pressure. And you either leave what you came for or you override the pressure and get what you got to have. It's like that in life sometimes because we have to deal with pressures that are sent to distract us or to control us. To control us not to get what we want but to get what the one who sent the pressure wants us to have. And can I tell you that we have an enemy in the world that wants to control us. Oh, I hear my friend out there today, y'all. And he uses different forms of pressure to do it with. Glory be to God. He, he uses oppression which is cruel and unjust treatment. He uses depression, which is emotional despair. He uses compression to reduce us in size by squeezing us out of what God wants us to have. Oh God, in the times in which we live, there are many people who are oppressed, depressed, and compressed because they have been controlled by the enemy to do what he wants them to do and not what God wants them to do. Oh my God, uh, help me preach this message and lean over to your neighbor and say, I got to get away from him. Ah, mm. oh God, because the enemy uses pressure because he knows pressure works. Because it worked in the Garden of Eden. When he put pressure on Adam and Eve to disobey. Glory be to God. And he's been using it now ever since. Uh, okay, think about the last time you were pressured to do something God wasn't pleased with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, you were pressured to go off on somebody. You were pressured to cheat on something or somebody. You, you were pressured to walk away from something that you needed. Pressured to act out of the will of God. Uh, touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, the pressure is real. That pressure on my job is real. I, I'm not playing about that. that. That pressure in my home is real. I ain't joking about that. That pressure in my spirit is real. The pressure of racism is real. The pressure of sexism is real. The pressure of a Economic stability is 
real. Mm. But can I tell you that while the pressure is real, the pressure can be overcome and actually be used to positive production. Oh, God. Our God, right here in the text today, uh, our God is telling us through the children of Israel, they produced under pressure. Oh, God. Uh, because the word of God tells us that Israel was captive in Egyptian bondage. But prior to the bondage of the Egyptians, they were productive. Ooh. The children of Israel was made up of the sons of Jacob. And their households, which were, were followed Jacob into Egypt. And Jacob, uh, who, who followed Joseph into Egypt. Oh, I want to ask you who you follow. Now, Joseph now, being in Egypt, was by divine design. Oh, you know his story, what the, what the enemy meant for his bad. God turned it out for his good. The Bible tells us that Joseph suffered his way into the divine plan for his life. He suffered in his prophecy with his brothers. He suffered in the pit because of his brothers. He suffered in the prison because of his brethren. But he reigned in the palace because of the plan of God was not fulfilled in his suffering. I need to tell somebody that the child of God will suffer. I, I go ahead and lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm sorry. You can't get out of this life without suffering. I, I know you're saved and I, I know you're filled with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. I know you speak in tongues and I know you got a good relationship with God but you will suffer Jesus said in this world you're going to have trouble it ain't you baby it's the world that you live in and you will have trouble but I want you to know that trouble is not the total plan of God for your life because God's plan is not fulfilled in your suffering alone. Oh, God. But your suffering is preparation for the fulfillment of your prophecy. Ah, oh, God, because now God told Abraham that he would birth a strong nation through him. And Joseph was the grandson of Abraham, making now Joseph part of the fulfillment of the prophecy that God gave to Abraham. How many of you know your prophecy is bigger than you? Oh God, glory be to God. That's why you need to raise your kids in the fear and the admonition of the Lord because that prophecy is bigger than you. Ah, oh, that's why you need to raise your grandchildren in the fear and the admonition of the God because that prophecy is bigger than you. But can I tell you that nothing you go through in your suffering will be wasted. Oh, oh somebody didn't hear me right there. Uh, nothing that you go through in your suffering will be wasted because there is a divine plan over your life uh, and your suffering uh, can make the way for your posterity to fulfill the plan of God. Ah, uh, uh, God, encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, it's not for nothing. Uh, that stuff you're going through right now uh, is not for nothing. Uh, your suffering is not for nothing your pain is not for nothing your struggle is not for nothing because the plan of God for your life called for you not only to suffer but it calls for victory as well oh God I heard God say if you suffer with me you will reign with me but notice the progression he didn't say if you reign with me you're going to suffer he said if you suffer you're going to reign oh so Somebody missed that right there. Lean over to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the suffering comes before the promotion. And if I can't put in the suffering, it's just a matter of time.
him before God is going to exalt me to reign with him. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, it's just a matter of time, baby, because weeping may endure for a night, but joy is coming in the morning. It's just a matter of Now, the children of Israel had the DNA. That's my friend, y'all. Had the DNA of Abraham. Oh, I've been missing that, Brother Mason. You just don't know. The children of Israel had the DNA of Abraham and Joseph. And even though they both had transition, the DNA kept living in future generations. Ah, oh God. The DNA of victory, the DNA of perseverance, despite the pressure they experienced, was in their spirit spirit and in their mind and I need to ask a question what's in your spiritual DNA is it victory or is it defeat is it perseverance or giving up is it conquering or comfort you need to know what's in your DNA because the pressure the enemy sins will test your spiritual DNA oh he don't care how much you sing. He don't care how much you praise. He don't care how much you serve. But he wants to know what's on the inside. Glory be to God. Ah, oh, but that's why God said that greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Well, what am I supposed to do with that? I'm supposed to look on the inside to defeat the enemy on the outside. And when I do that, I will have the victory. Ah, oh, glory be to God. What's in your spiritual DNA? Ah, oh, God. Ah, oh, you need to know it because the pressure of the enemy is going to test it. Uh, at your most vulnerable moments, the enemy will test your spiritual DNA. Oh God, when you're tired, he will test your spiritual DNA. When your mind is occupied with the concerns of this life, he will test your spiritual DNA. When your heart is overwhelmed with the cares of this life, he will test your spiritual DNA. DNA. Oh, lean over to your neighbor and say, he don't play fair. Oh, God. He ain't gonna come when you high in the Holy Ghost. He ain't gonna come when everything is coming to roses. He gonna come when you feel like I can't make another thing. He gonna come when everything around you seems to be going crazy. And that's when he showed them. I wish I had about 15 of y'all that would just tell your neighbor, I'm tired of that slew footed. Oh my God. I'm tired of that crazy looking. I'm tired of that devil. Every time I turn around, he's coming at me with something. Oh God, but can I tell you? Oh, can I tell you? I, what I told him I T1 on Thursday. You too anointed for the enemy to leave you alone. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here. You talk about being anointed. You want to be anointed but know that your anointing is going to draw the attack of your enemy because that's how you really know that you anointed don't tell me you anointed because you're speaking tongues don't tell me you anointed because you preach good don't tell me you anointed but when you can take the devil's best shot and still come back with a praise then you know you anointed oh I wish I had somebody in here that would just give God a quick praise and say Lord thank you for this anointing do you not know that it's that anointing that kept your mind it's that anointing that kept your heart it's that anointing that gave you the power to do exceedingly and a He tested Jesus. Oh, God. He tested the spiritual DNA of Jesus when he was hungry for food because he thought that was his 
best opportunity at the time. But because victory was in Jesus' DNA, he passed the test of the enemy because pressure will reveal what's in your spiritual DNA. Ah, oh God, if quitting is in your spiritual DNA, pressure will make you quit. If blaming other folk is in your spiritual DNA, pressure will make you blame other people who ain't got nothing to do with what you're going through. If contention and strife is in your spiritual DNA, he pressure will make you auger about what's already yours. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, I got to check my spiritual DNA because I want to win in my life. I want to fulfill his will in my life. I want to go forward in my life. And as you find something in your DNA that's unnecessary, ask God to take it out and repent place it with what is necessary for your victory oh God Lord put strength in my DNA Lord put peace in my DNA Lord put your power in my DNA now the Bible says that the children of Israel uh, were fruitful. Even though they were in bondage, uh, they were fruitful. They increased abundantly. They multiplied uh, and became mighty in Egypt uh, under the old king of Egypt uh, because he knew Joseph. Ah, uh, oh God. But a king rose to power in Egypt that did not know Joseph uh, and he envied the success of the people of God and he conspired to try and stop their progression or their prophecy oh God they wanted to stop them because they feared them ah they feared the children of God would become greater than they were they feared that the children of God would become more prosperous than they they feared the children of God would become more successful than them and this tells us my brothers and sisters the reason the enemy comes against you and I because even though he doesn't know God like we do he sees the hand of God on our lives oh I can shout right there when the enemy thought it killed me I'm still giving him glory when the enemy thought I was going to take my marbles and go home I still showed up for another round when the enemy thought he had me God snatched me out I wonder is there anybody in here that would say yeah pastor that's my testimony the enemy thought he had me with that last attack the enemy thought he had me with that last thing he brought to me but glory be to God I'm still giving him glory I'm still giving him praise matter of fact I'm better because of the issue Glory be to God. Uh, he tells us the reason now. And can I tell some of y'all, uh, you know more about God than the devil does. You know more about God than the devil does. Can I prove it? Uh, you know that God saved. And the devil don't. Ah, oh God. You know that God delivers. And the devil don't. Ah, you know that God heals. Cause ain't no devil ever been healed. Touch your name and say, I know him like that. Ah, because he saved me. I know he's a savior. He delivered me. I know he's a deliverer. He healed me. I know he's a healer. He blessed me. I know he's a Bless her. He made a way for me. I know he's a way maker. He provided for me. I know he's a provider. Is there anybody in here? I feel God in here. Is there anybody in here that knows him like that? Or oh, tell your neighbor, neighbor. The reason I shout like I shout is because I know him like that. The reason I praise like I praise. I ain't trying to impress you. I 
just know him like that. Is there anybody here that knows him like that? Oh, God. Uh, now, the new king of e Egypt devised a plan to put pressure on the children of Israel. And now the plan called for them to be put under heavy taskmasters. The plan called for them to be afflicted by the burdens of the heavy taskmaster. Uh, so what did they do? They put heavy taxes on them. They put things on them that afflicted their minds. They put things on them to diminish their blessing. They put things on them that made it hard physically to labor. They put a lot of pressure on them because they were really trying to destroy them. Oh God, and the plan they devised even called now for the children of God to build them buildings and make the children of God play for it. Oh, I know y'all heard that before. Oh God, we're going to build a wall and we're going to make them pay for it. Oh yeah. Oh y'all thought that he, he just came up with that. Oh no the devil ain't got no new stuff. He's still doing the same stuff he's always done. Their enemy had a plan to destroy them but their enemy did not know that God had given them a promise. Oh high five your neighbor and say neighbor. Ah, I know the enemy got a plan for my device. Y'all don't mind if I preach it like I feel it. I know we got a plan for my demise, but God gave me a promise. Touch your neighbor and say he's too late with his plan because God gave me the promise before the plan was ever executed. The Bible says that God gave Abraham a promise for him and his people that he would make them a great nation and the Bible says that God is not a man that he should lie if he says it he will bring it to pass lean over to your neighbor and say neighbor I know that to be true because the promises of God are active in my life the only reason things are as well as they are in my life amid the attacks of the enemy against me is because I got a promise from my God and a promise will change your life because a promise says it's on the way I wish I had somebody here that said well what's on the way well my question is what did he promise you Oh God, the Bible said that in the midst of the pressure of the enemy, the promise of God was made manifest because the children of God prospered anyway. The Bible, the Bible says the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied. High five your neighbor and say the more I'm afflicted the better hey, I get David said it was good that I was afflicted because if I had not been afflicted I never would have seen the level of his goodness in the land of the living the more they were afflicted the more they grieved but look at what it did to the enemy. The enemy was grieved because child of God I rose to tell you that you will prosper. You will make it. You will grow. You will 
multiply because you have the promise on your life because the promise of God it trumps the pressure of the enemy can I say it again the promise of God it trumps the pressure of the enemy the promise of God it overcomes the pressure of the enemy that's why we don't go on sight but we go by faith because faith is the title deed of the promise well let me tell you if you were somebody said I'm on the way to pick you up and you somebody else comes by to say can I ride with you you tell them go on your way because I got a ride you ain't got a ride you got a promise high five your neighbor and say neighbor that means it's yet to come I wish I had somebody that's sick to say well I'm healed wait a minute you're still coughing you're still having trouble breathing but yeah but I'm not going on the pressure I'm going on the promise I got I got I got I got I got I got an operation coming up but I'm healed well wait a minute it ain't even happened yet well I'm walking in my promise even though it ain't manifest yet this is what the enemy didn't know and the Bible says mm, God that God's promises overrise the of the enemy can I tell you in this season I know you feel the pressure of the enemy but don't forget about the promise of God on your life I know you feel the pressure of the enemy on that job but don't forget about the promise of God on your life I know that you feel the pressure of the enemy in that relationship but don't forget hey, about the promise of God over your life I know you feel the pressure of the enemy over your mind your body and your spirit but God has given you a promise for your pressure ah God he promised to save God he promised to heal God he promised to make a way God he promised to provide God he promised to bless God he promised you victory over the pressure and I heard I feel like preaching now I heard I heard the Lord say that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper because the weapon it brings pressure but the promise diffuses the pressure and brings it to nothing high five your neighbor and say neighbor God diffused him if you knew what the enemy had planned for you it didn't even get to you because God put it out oh God he wanted to destroy you a long time ago but everything that he tried he tried alcohol but God put it out he tried drugs but God put it out he tried sickness but God put it out is there anybody in the place that would say Lord 
thank you for putting it out before it got to me. You put it out before it could heal. You put it out before it could harm me. You put it out. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, the Lord is all right. Because if I knew what the devil had planned, if I knew how he wanted to kill me, God came to my rescue. Now he diffused him and now they prospered even in the midst of the pressure. But some of y'all say, well, that's Old Testament and God ain't moving like that. Well, let me go over to the New Testament. The Bible said that Jesus, who had received the promise in order to redeem the mankind, touch your neighbor and say, God made good on his promise. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, the Bible says that he goes now. He feeling the weight he's feeling the pressure after he had been whipped but he goes now to the garden of Gethsemane and there he is the Bible said that he was crying he was writing by great drops of blood while he prayed was coming through his skin and the Bible said he told his father he said Lord if there be another way this pressure is too great this pressure is too much this pressure is going on but Jesus he teaches us he said never the less not my will I came on a promise I showed up on a promise I'm standing on a promise so nevertheless not my will but thy will be done and can I tell you that the press that the promise was greater than the pressure because the Bible said they hung him high and they stretched him wide he put his head oh I feel like preaching now he put his head in the locks of his shoulder and he said it is finished and he died oh he died he died what the sun refused to shine he died and hell start having a party the bible said they took him down from the cross they put him in the tomb and all night friday night the pressure rain all night saturday the pressure rain but early 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 sunday morning the pressure gave way to the promise touch your neighbor and say neighbor i'm on my sunday morning now my promise is overtaking my pressure and I declare that this relationship will be healed I declare that this building will go up I declare that I will be healed I declare that I will overcome because our power in the promise high five your neighbor and say neighbor I'm coming out now I'm coming out with power I'm coming out with fresh anointing I'm coming out because there's power whatever it is that's pressuring you put it under your promise oh y'all didn't hear me y'all Y'all didn't hear me. Whatever it is that's pressuring you, put it under 
your promise. I need about five saved folk. I need about five Holy Ghost filled folk to just say, I'm going to put it under my feet. Glory be to God. Because my promise is in God. And the Bible said they put the devil under. That thing that's worrying you. That thing that's stressing you out. That thing that the enemy wants to keep on your mind. It don't belong in your head. It belongs under your feet. Because you got a promise. Woo. You got a promise from God. Oh, God, I feel your presence. I wonder, is there anybody in here that know you got a promise over your life? God has given you a promise. And I know, I know, I know, the enemy put more pressure on you after midterms. I know the enemy put more pressure on you after they said he's running again. I know the enemy put more pressure on you when they say we're going to start a civil war. But how many of you know, it don't matter what they say. Oh, God, it don't matter what they say. That man, young woman, told you, you can't make it without me. That young lady told your brother that, don't nobody want you but me. And the devil tried to magnify that in your mind. Some of y'all, your friends walked out on you. Family turned their back on you. And you thought it was over. But God said, no, it ain't never over. Woo, God, it ain't never over. Because I'm here. He said, now, if I move, it's over. But I ain't moving. Oh, my God. Can you just tell your neighbor he ain't moving? He ain't moving. I don't care how hard it gets. I don't care how, 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 how heavy it gets. God said, I'm not moving. And he ain't moving because he got something for you. Glory be to God. The pressure cannot overwhelm the promise. So, Pastor, what are we to do with that? Keep trusting the promise. Keep your faith in the promise. Though it tarries, it shall speak of itself. Glory be to God. Somebody said, well, I've been waiting a long time, but they that wait on the Lord shall renew. Glory be to God. You ain't waiting for nothing. Oh, I wish I had somebody in here that would just tell your neighbor, I ain't waiting for nothing. Oh, I got a healing that's on the way. I ain't waiting for nothing. I got a deliverance on the way. I ain't waiting for nothing. Sure. God said, I have it for you. Keep trusting in him. Keep walking in him. Because the promise got to come to pass. Even though Israel suffered in bondage. The promise was, I'm going to make 
you a great people. Hitler tried to destroy them. And they still here. Glory be. How many of y'all ever had some, some, some attacks on your life? But you say, you know what? I'm still. Oh, listen. Listen, I'm not talking about physical. I'm talking about spiritual. I'm still giving God praise. I, I, I'm still worshiping. I, I'm still lifting him up. I, I'm still giving it. The devil hits me and I come back with a praise. He slaps me on one side. I come back with a hallelujah. He tries to kick me, but I come back with a thank you, Jesus. Because God is. Don't let the pressure. Overwhelm will make you forget about the promise. Now, I need you to do something for me, real quick. I need you to do something real quick. Everybody in here that know you got a promise on your life, I want you to look up to heaven and say, Preserve me for my promise. Okay, 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 okay. I need some real people. I need some real people. I need some real people. That was nice, but I need, I need some real people that know you got a promise of God on your life. I need you to look up to your father and tell your father, preserve me for your promise, God. Oh, yeah. I'm going through some stuff right now, God. I need you to preserve me. I, my mind is troubled. I, I need you to preserve me, God. They said I'm not going to make it. But God, I need you to preserve me for I need you to preserve me for your promise oh God I feel your presence oh God I feel I feel the Holy Ghost in here I, I don't know about you but I feel the power of God in this place preserve me for your promise God you told me you're going to do it. I'm waiting on you, God. You said it's going to come to pass. I believe you, Jesus. You said it's going to happen. I got faith in you, God. And I'm not going to let this pressure. <laughs> I ain't letting this pressure take me out. I ain't letting this pressure make me quit. I ain't going to let this pressure make me turn my back on you, God. I need a promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I know some people say, well, Pastor Ross, he going to do it anyway. I, I ain't got to say all that. I ain't got to do all that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, but listen, uh, check with me in about three years, and, and I want to see how you're doing. I, oh, yeah. You say, I ain't got to holler like that. I, I'm too cool to holler. I, I'm, too, uh, I'm too put together to holler. Uh, but that's why God has sent a greater pain your way in order to make you holler. Oh, God. But how many? y'all will say you ain't got to put no more on my plate I'm going to open my mouth and holler that I need you I'm going to open my mouth and call on your name the Bible says tribulation produces patience but I don't need I don't need another hit for me to call on him. Oh, I don't need another hit for me to trust him. I don't need another hit for my faith to be released in him. All I need is a promise. All I need is a promise. God, you said it, I believe it. I'm going to say it again. God, you said it, I believe it. God, you said it, I believe it. God, you said it. My symptoms ain't nothing but pressure. The clouds ain't nothing but pressure. 
The heat ain't nothing but pressure. But God, the promise is going to pull me out the clouds. The promise is going to pull me out the heat. The promise is going to put me in the blessing. My brothers and sisters, I know, I know you're going through. I get it. I do. I am too. But what worked for the children of Israel will also work for us. Why? Because the same God that delivered them will deliver us. Glory be to God. Oh my God. Lord have mercy. I, listen, at the, at the risk of sounding cliche, lean over to your neighbor and say it's going to be all right. Oh yeah, y'all know y'all not saying it. Y'all, y'all saying it like y'all been in church. I need you to stand with some conviction and tell, encourage your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's going to be all right. It, it's going to be all right. Not because, not because of nothing, but the word of God is going to be all right. I wish I had about 50 of y'all that would just step into this thing and lean over to your neighbor and say, it's going to be all right. Your neighbor needs to hear it. Your neighbor of going through uh, your name and the is going to be all right because he has a power to diffuse the pressure so that I can wait on the promise glory be to God hallelujah can I get about 15 of y'all to just give him a crazy praise You know what the enemy is saying? He said, I thought y'all could get crazier than that. (laughs) With all the stuff I done took you through, with all of the pressure that I done put you, I thought you could get crazier than that. I need some crazy saints to go into a crazy praise. The devil tried to do everything he could to take you out, but you're still... This is the last thing, and I promise I'm going to leave you alone. I need about 20 of y'all to raise your hand and say, I will prosper. I will multiply. I will grow. I will prosper. I will multiply. I will grow. I need you to say it like you mean it. I will prosper. I will multiply. I will grow. I will prosper. I will multiply. I will grow. I will prosper. I will multiply. I will grow. Now give him a praise. praising God. Don't stop praising him. Lift your hands up unto heaven and give God some glory because he's been too good for us to just sit down on our praise. After all we've been through, after all we've come through, God is still God and he is still blessing us. And guess what? If God decided not to do anything else, know that he's already done enough. But because God is willing to continue to bless you, stand up on your feet right now and give God some praise. Give him glory right now in the name of Jesus. Say thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your peace. Thank you for help. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my marriage. Thank you for my family. Just thank you. Whatever your thank you is, whatever your situation is, you thank God right now. our pastor preach today? Did the Lord use that man of God today to speak the word? Amen. Amen. At this point in our service, we're here right now. The ministers are here. I'm here. If there's anyone in the house right now that needs prayer, feel free to come up right now. Don't be ashamed. He said, if you be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my father. No one knows what you've gone through. No one can feel your pain. 
No one knows what he's done to you, what she's done to you, what they've done to you. But if you want to relieve yourself of some of that pressure, bring it to Jesus. We're not Jesus, but we know him. Those of you that are online, if you're viewing right now and you want to pray with me, if you have a relationship with God, and you may have stepped back away from God. I want to pray that we all get back into the ark of safety. Which is in Jesus Christ. And at this time I'm going to pray a prayer. Heavenly Father, we come before you right now saying thank you God. We thank you for your grace, your mercy God. We know that it is sufficient God. Now come on in right now God and just have your way God. Forgive right now for every indiscretion that is within us right now every inconsistency God and clean us up right now God like only you can God Lord the, let the blood of the lamb sh shed upon us right now God wash our crimson red sins whiter than snow God so that we may be able to see your face when it's all over said and done down there God no matter what has happened in the past God no matter what I've done God I know that you will forgive me for it and right now I ask that you cover me right now in the blood right now hide me behind your cross so that when the enemy wants to try to get me God you're standing right there before me God you're my defender God you are my warrior God and you are my champion and because you are my champion I can be more than a conqueror right now in Jesus name we pray amen if you don't have a relationship with God and you're online or you're in the house right now if you're in house you can come up to the ministers, and we can lead you to the cross. Online, if you don't have a relationship with God, at this point in time, we can go to God right now. We just pray a simple prayer, and what I would ask is that you would just simply just repeat after me, no matter where you are, where you're sitting, where you're viewing from, all over the nation, all over the world, city of Waco, if you would just follow in, follow suit, and you will have that relationship with God. God, I know that I am a sinner. For I failed, God, and I have fallen short of your glory. But, God, I know that you are a God that is willing and just to forgive. And right now, God, I come and I ask that you forgive me for all of my sins, God. Cleanse me from the top of my head to the sole of my feet, God. I acknowledge that you are the great God. And Jesus Christ is your son who hung on the cross, died, rose again, and is sitting at your right side right now, making intercessions for me, God. And right now, God, I pray that the intercessions being made for me right now will cleanse my soul, cleanse my spirit, so that I may walk in the newness of life, God, and be a child of you, God. For you are my father, I am your child. Enter and let me join into, let me join into your family right now, God, that I may be able to see your face when it's all over said and done down here. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In order to be saved, all you have to do is do one, two things. Ask for forgiveness and acknowledge that you are a sinner. That's it. It's done deal. And if you prayed that prayer with me, you are now a child of God. And you are now a child of God. At this time, we're still accepting people that if you want to come up for prayer, if you want, if you want to get the week off your chest, if you want to get the last month off your chest, you can come lay your burdens down right here. You can come lay your burdens right down here at the altar. The altar is wide open for you. At this time, please come. As I stated before, we are not Jesus. We're not God. We know him. And we're willing to pray with you. present and you don't have a church home and the spirit of the Lord is unctioning your spirit and told you that this is the place that I want to maturate you I want you to grow and I want you to be in this type of ministry I want you to be amongst these type of people that are growing with me though no we're not perfect by far we're not perfect but we are growing we are learning and we're moving forward we're not staying where we are but we are moving forward you can come get in the same car that we riding in right now there's plenty of room for you or anyone online or in the house right now if this is the church that God says he wants you to attend, now is the time that you can come. I am not the pastor of this church. I'm just standing in closing our service. Our pastor's getting ready for baptisms. But I will ex we will accept you as a church, and he will give you the right hand of fellowship in the following Sunday. So right now, if this is the place that God says he wants you to be, 
Come join the family. Come join the family. We need new brothers and sisters. We want more brothers and sisters. Standing all over the building. It's ours to extend, yours to accept or reject, but never reject the hands of God. Amen. Until we leave the sanctuary, if you desire to give yourself, your life to Christ, come up to one of us and we will guide you in that direction. Thank you all for coming this week. We thank you for your presence and, and I pray that God blesses you as you go home. So now we're going to go ahead and speak the benediction over the, over the service right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for your word and all that you've done, God. Continue to lead God and bless each and every person in this house, God. The way that you see fit for him, God. Just, just, just have your way in our lives, God. We know that you make no mistakes, God. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to the one that will present us faultless before his presence with exceeding great joy. To the only wise, God, be glory dominion power and honor hear this forth and forever and the church of God say amen